Good morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. Our focus this morning is on the arts. It was former U.S. Secretary of Education William Bennett who said, the arts are an essential element of education. Just like reading, writing, and arithmetic, music, dance, painting, and theater are keys that unlock profound human understanding and accomplishment. The United Performing Arts Fund is a nonprofit organization that raises funds to support some of the southeastern Wisconsin's most prominent arts groups. And here to tell us more about that is Deanna Tillish, who is the president of the United Performing Arts Fund. How are you, Deanna? I'm very well. Thank you for it having is, me here. Oh, a pleasure to have you here. Mm -hmm. And this time of year is when things get really exciting for you guys. Uh, UPATH has been uh, doing this for almost 50 years now. We'll so. celebrate 50 50 years next year. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about UPATH and what it is you mm -hmm. do. Sure, well now for 49 years, mm -hmm. we have been raising dollars to ensure high quality performing arts that's right here in our backyard. Our mission also includes though, promoting the performing arts as a regional asset mm -hmm. because we want people to come and enjoy the arts. And part of that is to let them know what exists. And then it's also really important that we steward the dollars that our donors so generously give us mm -hmm. through a very rigorous vetting process. And that's just to instill confidence in our donors so they know that they're making a, a sound investment in the community makes a lot of sense to me and there are a long list of organizations mm -hmm. that give us uh, wonderful performances throughout the year and if you could tell us a few of those. Sure, well, we the, the groups that we support we have 15 of them mm -hmm. and we are their largest donor so they rely on us for their sustainability. Uh, to be perfectly frank without our support many of these groups would either have to diminish their product offerings wow. or would cease to exist so uh, UPATH is essential to ensuring a, a vibrant performing arts scene. Mm -hmm. The groups that we support, we have what we call our cornerstone groups, and those are really the six groups that are probably most well known by, by people in southeastern Wisconsin, and that would be the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. Right. We have the Milwaukee Ballet that's doing a, a Dorian Gray um, over the next two weekends. Wow. We have the First Stage Theater, which is right now doing Holes. We have the uh, Skylight Music Theater. We have the um, uh, I mentioned the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra. We also have the Florentine Opera. Yeah. And uh, the Milwaukee Repertory Theater, there is an array of music, dance, and theater that all of us really do have the opportunity to enjoy. Yes, and uh, with that said, you've got the 2016 campaign that's mm -hmm. gonna be kicking off on March 1st and going through June 14th, and needless to say, we're getting closer to your kickoff date. So what can our viewers at home most look forward to as you get ready to kick off the campaign? Well, we have a lot of activity that, that gears up to, to the campaign, and, and we're actually hosting uh, what we call the 15 days before we launch. Uh -huh. And there's gonna be an array of, of activities. We're gonna be doing uh, a lot of interviews, going out there to spread the word. Um, one of our challenges is, is really the awareness of UPATH. Mm -hmm. um, when you get away from the downtown area, our awareness levels start to decrease. And so part of it is, is just getting the word out. We're very fortunate that the Business Journal as well as the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, they do a lot of in-kind for us. So they're gonna be doing a campaign on our behalf. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're very fortunate because our theme around this year is Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Ah. And, and uh, Yip Harburg, who was the, the composer of that beautiful, beautiful piece of music that mm -hmm. I think everybody knows, yes. um, his grandson is gonna be at our launch to really tell his story and, and, and really represent his grandfather's legacy. I love that, and uh, the thing about this, not only did he write Somewhere Over the Rainbow, he did the entire score for The Wizard of Oz and some other outstanding works that I think that many of our viewers will find intriguing. Uh, Yip was called Broadway Social Conscious, mm -hmm. and that's because when it came to issues of race, he in many ways was way ahead of his time. Uh, he wrote the music for the all-black musical Cabin in the mm -hmm. Sky, which starred Ethel Waters mm -hmm. and um, Lena Horne, and then the Nat King Cole hit song, It's Only a Paper Moon, mm -hmm. was also written by this genius. Exactly. So to have uh, his grandson here to talk about uh, what it means to uh, be a 
descendant of someone of this magnitude Absolutely. is really special. It really is, and we're so fortunate to have found Aaron. Um, you know, there, I think somewhere with a rainbow, it, it, is, it is classic, it's mm -hmm. iconic. Um, but it also represents so much about the arts because the arts, they, they are fundamental to our humanity. Okay. And they truly speak to who we are as a society they help in, in fostering creativity, they inspire us, they nurture our soul. And when you think about the story of Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, that's what it's all about. It's <laughs> making dreams come true. true. And when you, you know, when you go and see the ballet, it is beauty in motion. They're, the arts touch us in a way that really nothing else can replicate. And, and we're, we're fortunate that we have access to so many different types of performing arts organizations mm -hmm. and, and to be able to test drive them and, and really uh, appreciate what they do for our society. I agree, and I always talk about this when we're on the subject of the performing arts. I'm always intrigued by these individuals, whether it be the ballet or watching someone do live theater, the amount of talent it takes to do that, the focus and the tenacity, you just really are in awe when watching these individuals uh, display their talent. It, and the talent is off stage as well, mm -hmm. because when you think about all the pieces that have to come together, be the costuming, mm -hmm. the, the stage design, the prop. We have a prop master at the Milwaukee Rep that is known throughout the country on how to solve problems when it comes to props. <laughs> um, but that all has to, to come together in a way that makes it magical. Uh, and you know, lighting, the use of lighting mm -hmm. is, is dynamic. The, the gentleman who was doing the lighting for the Super Bowl, the, the halftime show, he is actually doing the lighting for Dorian Gray at the ballet. Wow. So that that's the lot. kind of talent <laughs> that we can bring in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's because of Michael Pink. My, Michael Pink is internationally known as an artistic director of the ballet. They're right here, in yeah. our, in, right here in, in southeastern Wisconsin. You have the Florentine Opera that's won three Grammy Awards. Wow. So, you know, the quality is, is really second to none. And for a community our size, it really is quite spectacular. Absolutely, and that's why it's so important for people to not only know that it exists, but to support it so that we can continue to have all of these great things mm -hmm. right here in the city of Milwaukee. Now, last year, you path with the help of your campaign co-chairs, mm -hmm. volunteers, and your wonderful staff, mm -hmm. you guys made, was it $12 million? $12,000,000, $1,226, to be exact. <laughs> to be exact. Mm -hmm. So who's I'm counting? guessing you, but who's mm -hmm. counting? <laughs> Uh, you are probably trying to exceed that goal this year. Well, we have a pretty dynamic set of co-chairs this year uh -huh. with Paul Purcell from Baird. We also have Paul Eberly from White Hirschbeck and then Peggy Williams Smith from Marcus Corporation. Okay. And they're a little bit competitive. <laughs> so um, <laughs> chances <a> <laughs> are they are not gonna rest on their laurels or the laurels of others <laughs> before them. Uh, and so we haven't yet set our goal. We'll announce it at our launch on my, March 1st. Okay. But I am fairly confident that it's gonna be a new milestone. I'm loving it and looking <laughs> forward to it all. So uh, we've talked about the theme being somewhere over the rainbow mm -hmm. this year. So I think this is a perfect time for us to check out this video mm -hmm. that really gives everybody at home an idea of uh, the wonderful things happening right here in our city when mm -hmm. it comes to the arts. Let's take a look. helps us all dream. When I perform, I feel I can conquer the world. It's so exciting to see an audience swept away to another place when we put on a great performance. A culturally vibrant community is a dream come true for local business. Somewhere over the rainbow. Way off. Huh. There, there's a land that I heard of? <laughs> Once in, in a, a lullaby. lullaby. Somewhere over the rainbow skies are blue. And the dreams that you dare to dream really do come true. Someday I'll wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind. 
troubles melt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you'll find me. When you walk into one of our places on a Friday night and it's packed, that's the arts. UPATH really is the foundation for a lot of us here, and that's why we have such a strong theater community. I have a scholarship with the Milwaukee Youth Symphony Orchestra, thanks to UPATH. It just makes you want to sing along, right? <laughs> you don't want me to sing along. Trust me. But you know, when you talk about Somewhere Over the Rainbow, mm -hmm. that's a song that many of us have been singing since our childhood. Mm -hmm. And there's been so many people to sing the song and give us a different rendition over the years. Mm -hmm. It is, like you said earlier, just one of those classic songs. Yes. So a great theme, mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about some things that are important, because many times on this show, we talk about what issues are extremely important. And uh, one of those would be poverty mm -hmm. and how to get people out of poverty and things of that nature. And I found it inter interesting that there are statistics that show that having a high concentration of arts in one area increases social engagement and cohesion while also lowering crime and mm -hmm. poverty rates. Like, who knew? So uh, with that said, you guys have this new program that you're mm -hmm. very proud of that's really there to help individuals who maybe would like to attend the uh, different things that are going on but can't afford to. Correct. Tell us about it. Well, we just uh, are rolling out a program called UPATH Connect, mm -hmm. and it's being sponsored by Michael Best and Friedrich. Okay. And we, we've actually done a little bit of testing of this over the last couple of years. And what the, the city of, of uh, the D Department of Development with the city uh, released a, a report about, a, about 14 months ago. Mm -hmm. And it stated in there that one of the biggest issues within our community is the accessibility to arts and culture. Mm -hmm. And that could be social economic, it be, could be to disabilities, transportation. Right. And when we heard that, we thought, we're doing the right thing. We're, because we're partnering with local nonprofits, a select group of nonprofits that are out in the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. This way, this allows us to be able to take the arts into those neighborhoods, which we have done now two years in a row, and then also to allow for the individuals from those neighborhoods to be able to come down and consume the arts. Good so stuff. it's really a two-way street. Uh, and it's important because, as you said, it does help in terms of decreasing poverty. Mm -hmm. It helps in decreasing crime. If you have a rich community, but everyone has to have access to those assets for us to truly benefit as a community. Yes, and uh, before we run out of time, don't want to forget, uh, as we make our way out of the winter months, we still got a ways mm -hmm. to go, but come June, mm -hmm. everybody's excited about the UPATH Ride for the Arts, which is sponsored mm -hmm. by Miller Lite. Mm -hmm. So uh, when is this going to take place exactly? It is, it's on Sunday, June 5th, okay. at the Summerfest grounds. Mm -hmm. It is our 35th anniversary. Wow. And we have raised more than $275 million amazing. through this signature event. And uh, it's just a, an amazing day. You know, you get up and the weather is starting to turn nice yes. at that point in time. <laughs> I can guarantee it's going to be beautiful. <laughs> and uh, it's really, it kicks off the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have typically anywhere between 5,500 to 7,000 riders who come down. We have four different routes. It's a great way to, to get with your family, to be able to enjoy some sunshine, get a little bit of exercise, mm -hmm. 
and also raise money for the performing arts. Yes, and that's what you call a win-win all the way it around. Is. And so uh, there's the UPAP Smart Card mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could quickly tell us what that is. Sure, well the Smart Card is when you, uh, it, it's sponsored by Associated Bank and with a gift of $100 or more, mm -hmm. you are then able to purchase buy one, get one free tickets. Okay. That is a savings if you use it to its fullest extent with all 15 member groups of $650. Wow. In addition to that, we have a number of discounts. So we're rolling out a mobile app. So if you go to Mason Street Grill or you go to, to any of the hospitality democracy restaurants mm -hmm. or surge restaurants, you show your smart card either through an app or with a card. Mm -hmm. You will get a series of discounts. So the card essentially pays for itself. Yeah. You can go out, grab some dinner, go to a performance, go out to Cream City um, Swirl afterwards for some ice cream, <laughs> and you will benefit along the way with discounts uh, and also having a wonderful evening. Good stuff, and so uh, for people to get more information on anything that we've discussed, mm -hmm. you do have your website, of course. We do, so it'd be upaf.org. Okay. And we have uh, our performance guide on there, so you can find out what performances are coming up. Um, you can make a donation online, um, a whole array of information just about UPAF and the performing arts. Sounds good. UPAF.org or you can call 414-273-UPAF to find out the many ways that you can give. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for well, coming you, by Andrea. and all the best with the 2016 campaign. We appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks. And of course, we want everybody to keep their eyes open. And Deanna Tillis, she's the president of the United Performing Arts Fund. The 2016 campaign again runs March 1st through June 14th. When we return to Our Issues Milwaukee, we'll switch gears just a little and turn our focus to one of the premier natural history and science facilities that sits in the heart of downtown Milwaukee. We'll find out what's new at the Milwaukee Public Museum right after this. <music>